Attackers are constantly trying to gain access to our systems and services. So for that reason, we also have to constantly be monitoring our networks. And there is a lot of information to monitor. We want to monitor authentications and logins to our network. We want to understand what services people might be using, what type of remote access we're providing. And we need to verify that all of that activity is legitimate. If we monitor in real time, we can also react to specific security events. We can view account access. We could look at the firewall rule base. And we can provide additional scanning to see what type of activities may be going on. It's very common to roll up all of this information into a series of dashboards so that we can see at a glance what the current status is of our current security posture. Some obvious monitoring points would be our computing resources, things like systems where you have authentications, people logging in, and you want to see where they may be logging in from. If you start to see a lot of authentications from another country and you don't have any employees in that country, that could be a cause for concern, and you would certainly be able to see that in your monitoring. You could also monitor the services that are running on these devices, including the type of activity and how much activity. You can see if any backups have been completed on that device and what versions of software may be installed, which could help you determine if a device needs to be patched. We also want to monitor our applications. Checking for availability and making sure these systems remain running should be a major part of our monitoring. It's also interesting how many security breaches have been identified by monitoring the amount of traffic that has been transferred. If you start to see a lot of traffic suddenly being transferred that is well above the norm, that could indicate that an attacker is attempting to exfiltrate data. And you also want to keep the lines of communication open between the software developers or manufacturers of these applications so that you can be informed if any security issues are discovered. And it might be good to monitor the ongoing activity with your infrastructure. For example, you might have remote access systems where people are connecting in using the VPN. You might want to know how many of those connecting are employees, how many are vendors, and how many are guests. Firewalls and intrusion prevention systems can also be a very good source of information. If you suddenly see a large spike of attacks, that could give you a warning that someone is trying to gain access to your systems. But monitoring all of these very diverse systems can be challenging. You have different types of systems that keep logs in different formats, and they're obviously monitoring and looking for different types of information. Fortunately, there is a way to consolidate all of this information back to one single source, and that source would be a SIM, that is a Security Information and Event Manager. This allows you to consolidate log files from many different devices. So you could grab files from firewalls, switches, servers, routers, and anything else in your infrastructure and bring all of that log information back to this central database in the SIM. Because all of these logs are now consolidated and in one central place, it makes it very easy to start creating reports from this one reporting engine. And because all of these logs are contained in the database, you can begin comparing and correlating data across what used to be very diverse types of data that are now stored in one central database. So you might be able to look at a report that shows authentication to the VPN concentrator and then shows what type of information was accessed once the user was brought onto the network. You could also create a report showing what type of access users have to an application and show what process they use to get that access. And this might also be a good place to measure how much data has been transferred so that you can get a view of what the normal amount of data might be on your network and get an alert if you happen to exceed those numbers. Information technology professionals are discovering new vulnerabilities every day. So it's very useful to know what systems on your network may be susceptible to these specific vulnerabilities. Add to that challenge the fact that all of these systems that we're using tend to be constantly in motion. Our desktop computers don't tend to move very much, but our laptops, our mobile devices, and our tablets are constantly in motion. This makes it very challenging to be able to keep track of what type of vulnerabilities may exist in those systems. For that reason, many organizations have software and systems that can constantly scan all of the devices on their network and report on interesting metrics. For example, you could see what type of operating systems may be running on these devices and what versions are installed. You can see if there are particular device drivers installed and what versions they may be running. You might want to see what applications are installed on a mobile phone or a laptop computer. 
And you may be able to get a report on potential anomalies that have been identified and put into the logs of those devices. The scanning process can look for a lot of information, and it usually creates a mountain of details. The goal is to grab as much information as possible and store that into a database where later you can create some very detailed reports. These reports can contain extensive information about the status of these systems on our network. And very often, we're looking for reports that can give us a clue of what to do next. We refer to these as actionable reports. For example, you might create a report that shows how many devices are up to date or in compliance with these vulnerability patches. What's probably more important is identifying what devices are not in compliance and then putting together what actions may be required to bring those devices up to date. We might also run reports that show what type of operating systems are in use and if any of those operating systems need to be updated or patched. With all of this information stored constantly in this database, we can instantly create reports, especially given the latest vulnerability of the day. For example, you may find that a new vulnerability is suddenly announced, and you can use this database to create reports to understand how many systems may be vulnerable to this specific vulnerability. And there may be times when you want to perform some what-if analysis and perform ad hoc reporting. These are reports where you're considering what could happen in the future, and you create a report that shows the systems that may be affected by that hypothetical situation. For example, you may have an operating system you're using in your environment, and you know this operating system will be end of life in about six months. So the question will be, when that six months is up, how many systems will be susceptible to vulnerabilities going forward? And an ad hoc report can easily provide that information. In the movies, an attacker will gain access to a network, and then instantly alarms will go off, and everyone has now discovered the attacker on the network. The reality, however, is quite different. In an IBM security report in 2022, they documented that it takes an average of about nine months for a company to identify and contain a breach. During that nine-month period, the attacker is inside of the network, looking at other systems, gaining access to applications and resources, and finding their home inside of your network. This is just one of the reasons why having a very long-term backup strategy is so important. You never know when an attacker may gain access to the network, and they may be sitting in your network for months or even years before they're discovered. In some organizations, you may be mandated either by state or federal law to collect data over a certain amount of time. That's to not only provide information about how the business is performing, but it's also used from a security perspective to understand what may be happening with attackers inside of your network. It would be useful if we were able to get some type of notification the instant our systems discovered something unusual going on. For example, one of these alerts might be an increase in authentication errors, which could indicate that an attacker is trying to use a spraying attack or some other type of brute force to gain access to someone's account. Or perhaps suddenly there is a large amount of data that's being transferred out of your data center and onto a site that's on the internet. That type of activity should cause an immediate alarm or alert so that someone can look into what that type of traffic might be. You can probably think of a list of many different things you would like to know about if it ever occurred in your environment. That type of actionable data should result in some type of real-time alert so that people can look into what's happening on your network and understand if this is legitimate traffic or if it could be an attack. Instead of simply showing this information on a screen or waiting for someone to come in in the morning and look at a report, you can inform someone immediately with a text message or SMS. Or maybe you send an email message so that they can see more detail about what's happening on the network. And if you're part of a security operations center, you can have a separate group of alarms and alerts that are specifically for the SOC. Once an alarm is generated, it may be important to react to that alarm. And one of the most common reactions is to quarantine that system from everything else on the network. This would prevent an attacker from gaining additional access to that particular system, and it would prevent anyone on that system from then jumping out to other devices on the same network. The challenge, of course, is making sure that these alerts are accurate. And this is an ongoing challenge for anyone trying to put together alerting or alarming. This is usually a balancing act where you'd like to be able to view real-time alarms and alerts. But there may be some of those alerts that aren't actually accurate, and that would be a false positive. 
Perhaps even worse, there might be certain events that aren't logged at all and therefore don't create an alert. We refer to those as a false negative. This usually takes a bit of time to tune these alerts and find the right place for your particular network. But once everything is adjusted, your alerts are now very accurate to what's going on on your network, and you can start making immediate decisions about the information that's provided in those alarms.